Hello, everyone. So we are going to get started uh, with generating leads through B2B content marketing with Skyward Digital Influence Group and IBM. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to let everyone know that the hashtag for this webinar is hashtag B2B content. And if you have any questions during the duration of the webinar, please feel free to tweet using that hashtag, and we'll address them at the end of the webinar in the Q&A session. So we've got a great panel assembled for you today. Um, looking forward to sharing some really uh, great insights with you and hopefully some how-to steps on how to get started and run uh, a really successful B2B content marketing program for your organization. So joining us today is Scott Ludwig, Associate Director of Marketing at Digital Influence Group. Uh, Scott is uh, one of Digital Influence Group's most tenured team members and has executed numerous digital marketing programs on behalf of clients like IBM, Sony, T-Mobile, Hasbro, Axo Nobel, GE, and Genzyme. Through strategy development, a range of approaches, and extensive pressure testing, Scott is a master in the art of blogger and influencer activation programs. Over the past seven years, Scott has also helped subject matter experts at Fortune 500 companies adopt social media through in-depth social platform training and personalized social eminence plan development. Also with us is Christine McManus, Director of Strategic Services at Skyward. Christine oversees a team of experienced content strategists who develop strategy and deliver content for leading B2B brands like IBM and Iron Mountain. Christine's clients use the Skyward platform to recruit writers from the Skyward community of more than 20,000 Skywriters, manage their own writers, create and edit content, share it socially, and analyze and report on the performance of their content wherever they choose to deploy it. And also, Leslie Reeser, Program Director, Mid-Market Digital Marketing Worldwide at IBM. Leslie is an industry-recognized social media content and digital marketing authority and speaker. She is responsible for leading IBM's digital and influencer strategy, website design, and development and program delivery targeting mid-sized businesses and IBM business partners across multiple channels, including company websites, online applications, mobile, and social media for 62 markets worldwide. Leslie's global team has reinvented the way IBM utilizes content to drive opportunity, sales, and the delivery of integrated solutions to a global marketplace. And my name is Kevin Green. I'm the Senior Vice President of Strategy and Analytics at Digital Influence Group, and I will be moderating the webinar today. So we've got a variety of great topics uh, to go through today. Uh, if you take a look at the agenda, we'll be running through a whole host of different approaches and different elements of a successful content marketing program. For most of you right now, you probably know that 91% of B2B marketers are using content marketing. Uh, several organizations are using upwards of 20 different content marketing tactics. Unfortunately, only about 26 of those are using licensed or syndicated content. And 25% of them experience a lack of integration across marketing. Budgets are certainly rising when it comes to content marketing, but producing enough content remains the largest challenge. B2B organizations struggle with finding the right balance between volume of content that delivers on specific customer behaviors, like search, and tailored content that resonates with decision makers and drives, drives conversions. Tailored content is being powered by external subject matter experts and internal experts. Influencer marketing is becoming a growing necessity in any content marketing strategy. The right influencer relationship, curating your brand story, and sharing from their own perspective can increase the visibility of your message beyond other marketing tactics or simply posting the message from a branded own channel. When utilized correctly, a balanced content marketing strategy with deep integration with influencers can propel your efforts into the top five most effective demand generation tactics for your organization. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Scott Ludwig, who will talk a little bit about why content marketing and uh, the influencer program uh, that we've deployed in a variety of different places. All right, thanks, Kevin. So why an influencer program? Um, brands you know, tend to believe that by joining Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, that they're going to get thousands of followers right away. Reality is you need help from industry experts. People have worked hard for years to build that following. If good relationships are in place between an influencer and a brand, those influencers can actually help validate your message in a way that engages their audiences. And to that point, the audiences that they've established are likely your audience. And the influencers have a particular expertise, expertise and their readers choose to visit them 
because there's, there's one reason they come there. It's because they're interested in the content that they're writing about. By starting relationships with influencers, you can also introduce them to experts within your organization, whether it be you want them to follow them, to stay on top of what's happening, or to engage them in conversation. The opportunity is there, and you're making that connection. And because of these relationships you have in place with influencers, you actually have an opportunity to share ideas before executing them. Think about this group as a, as a focus group. Get their feedback. Their audience is your audience, again. They know what entices them and what will get them to engage with the content. So plan your marketing strategies around their feedback because it's well informed. We've heard a lot about paid, owned, and earned lately in, in the social space. They're, they're buzz terms. Um, last year, the Altimeter Group released the Converge Media Imperative, um, which really discussed how brands need to combine paid, owned, and earned. Well, I think what we did was add a layer that's focused on influences or trusted voices. Um, in our model, what these trusted voices do, they are the connective tissue across all activities. They help generate awareness around both paid, owned, and earned uh, marketing and communications efforts. When looking at an influencer program, I really want to stress four key words um, that you should keep top of mind when, when considering it. The first is authenticity. Both you and the influencers need to be authentic. You can't try to be someone you're not just because you want um, them to retweet your content. And influencers need to be able to create content that is original and unscripted so you can in invite them to really create something that is, is valuable to, to their audiences. The next word is personalization. And the reason for that is because from the first point of contact between you and the influencer, you need to really ensure that you're treating each and every influencer as an individual. We're, the times of mass mail merges are, are gone. Every communication has to be tailored to that individual to capture the, uh, their attention and show that you're there to have a relationship with them. Third word is reciprocity. You gotta get, give to get. Show the influencers love. Share their content uh, with your brand social networks. Promote them. Help them grow as a thought leader. By doing so, you're actually strengthening the bond that you have with this influencer, and in return, they're going to give you really quality content. And lastly, generosity. Be generous, not just with incentives. It doesn't matter how much you compensate them or, or what you're giving them in return for, for participation. Be generous with the content that you're, you're giving them access to, the experts, invitations to events. This is the type of content that is going to really help them create thought-provoking insights for their audience. A lot goes into executing an influence program, not going to lie. It's not something you can achieve overnight. The first phase is really all about planning. You, know, you need to identify the people that you want to work with. You have to know your target audience. Find influencers that talk to that audience. That's how you know if they're right for the program. The second piece is outreach. You're going to start a conversation, but it's not just sending them a blind email or, or submitting a contact um, or filling out a contact us form. It's figuring out what the right channel is to do it through, whether it be email, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Very important. Onboarding. They don't want to, to run. You don't want to them to run wild, and they don't want to run wild once you have them recruited for the program. Give them guidance. Give them clear asks. What is it that you want them to do for you? You know, it's all too often that it's it's kind of a left up to the influencer. But from our experiences, the influencers have told us they just want to be told straightforward what you want them to do. So once you have the influences on board, now the fun begins. First off, you've got to distribute the content. Help them help you. Give them the things they need to create content. Putting it out to you to, to ask yourself, what would a home run piece of content look like? And then go back and give them the things that they need in order to deliver that piece of content. Second phase is collect the content. Don't just let it sit out there. Once they post it to their blog, to their Google Plus page, to their LinkedIn page, do something with it. Share it across your own social networks. Lastly, measure. How do you know if this is all working? Are you just going to build relationships, give content, and not know what the impact is on the business? Of course not. Look at the metrics. Whether you have a relationship with an influencer or a blogger where you can ask them for, for their blog stats, um, or if you have tracking capabilities that you've implemented on your own. Use this data to optimize your program in, in, in more and, and also, at a higher level, make decisions when it comes to marketing, PR, communication, anything like that. Understanding the tiers of influence. So a lot, a lot of, uh, 
now, more often than not now, you'll hear different tiers used when it comes to bloggers. We have tier one influencers, and these are really reputable personalities, people like celebrities, someone with a substantial following. Everybody is trying to get the attention of these people. And if you can get the attention of these people, and I say if, it's great. It is exposure. But only if. It's hard to get in front of them. The second tier is a tier two individual. And these are the experts, people who have extensive experience in a particular focus area, most likely something that your brand or business is trying to push. It, and it really, from our point of view, it's the best opportunity for a valuable relationship because they are responsive to communications. They don't have an overflowing inbox of emails and, and pitches from, from PR agencies. The third level is your audience, the end users of your product or services. They are very vocal about their experiences, and they share these experiences in the social space. Now, there is obviously the level of tier threes that are not engaged in so, um, whether it be blogging or whatnot, but they're reading conversations, going to Reddit, going to Twitter, looking for that information. They don't have substantial followings, but these are uh, essentially the end users that you're trying to reach. As I mentioned, there's a lot that goes into these programs, not just from, an on, uh, from a setup portion, but also from a, um, a distribution portion. So looking at the ecosystem, there's many moving parts. And it should be integrated as, into as many places as possible for really optimal results. They can't just work separately. Here we, we work with influencers and, and with news, uh, news writers, as, as Christine from Skyworld will, will talk about shortly. But what we want to do is give them a place to, to take their content. We should be looking at integrating their content into paid media. Um, how, what marketing activities do we have happening now where our influencers can play a part in that creative? Looking at you know, getting the attention of the experts and, and intro making that connection between the influencers and news writers, whether it be content creation or interviews, there's an opportunity to, to make that connection. Invite them to events, whether it be online and offline. Get them to contribute their insights and experiences from those events. And then lastly, have them connect to your social channels. Let them amplify your message through their networks um, and engage in these platforms to show your existing networks that you have re um, relationships with these thought leaders in the space. When you look at the content funnel, you know, it, it's always about pushing your message. But when it comes to an influencer and what your target audience wants, you have to focus, think about what they want. And that starts with give them what they're looking for now. Um, nine out of ten times, people are going to discover content, whether it be on blogs or somewhere else online, because they're searching for something, because they heard about it recently or they read about it. So what you want to do is with your, with your strategies, make sure you're casting a wide net. And Christine will talk more about that um, with, with the Newswriter program. But once you get their attention with that wide net, with what's happening now, then you start to refine, start to look, talk about trends related to the industry an actual implementation of products. Start to get the thought leadership insights in there from your internal experts, from business partners that you have, and from the bloggers that you build relationships with. And then at the last level, what you can do is it, it's perfectly okay to promote yourself, but you want to do it when your audience is ready for it. You don't want to be intrusive of the experience. So use this opportunity to, to leverage your employees to create content because it's the day-to-day -day stuff is what's going to help sell your business's products or services. And that's where this content effort, opportunity really comes into play. And if you can see, you want to make sure that you're, you're casting your net wide, so more content at the top level, and then slowly degrading down into the specific solutions um, for the optimal experience. So where do we look at it from search? So in order to, to make sure that you're driving the right audience down into your, your own channel, you first have to start thinking about what is it they're looking for? Anticipate their moves, their search terms, their problems, their challenges. What are they going to put into a search bar when they start the journey? For IBM, we know that CIOs and CTOs turn to um, a place like Google for their, their first decision-making experience. They're going to look to see what's out there before making any type of decision. Then once you influence search, you can have content that it both is surfaces in, in a Google search or a social search. And that's really important because it becomes discoverable no matter where they're searching from. And then what you do is bring them to a place where you have influence and get them to engage and share content. So here, in this case with IBM, we created Mid-Size Insider, which is really aggregating 
um, both original content as well as content from influencers that we partner with to talk about the challenges that face um, mid-sized business owners and IT decision makers. And by doing so and having these conversations here, what we're giving them is a place to engage and share this content. But then more importantly, start to turn the corner. Really start to drive leads, uh, quality leads to IBM. Um, in doing so, we've actually put in some connective structure around the site, around the content that, that leads them to the solution. And Leslie will talk about it in a minute, about the actual um, impact that this program has had on the business. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to Christine, um, and she'll give you more insight into this, the impact on search. Thanks, Scott. So I'm Christine McManus, Director of Strategic Services for Skyward, um, as Kevin mentioned. I do lead a group of content strategists at Skyward who manage uh, content strategies for big brands in the B2B space. Specifically, I've been leading the delivery of the news content strategy for IBM since May 2011. Skyward is a technology platform that delivers scale in two key ways. First, our technology was built to scale the content marketing process. Brands have been told for a long time that they need to become publishers without getting any real direction on how to begin. Our technology is built to get you over that hurdle. Second, beyond scaling content, we are also focused on measuring performance so that you can scale your reach. That means tracking the, spe tracking the specific performance of content, like views, shared, keyword rankings, etc., so that you are able to move quickly to capture that opportunity. You publish content everywhere on the web, so it's a cru crucial part to track performance in order to inform your future content strategy. These are the two uh, challenges that we help brands address. So Kevin started off the webinar um, by talking about how the B2B marketing environment is changing. Consumers are turning to search engines to do research at all of the stages in their purchase process. They then share what they discover with their personal social networks. Because, and because of this, you can't push your messages at people anymore. You have to fill their specific needs when they are looking for information and pull them toward you. Globally, Google gets over 115 billion searches every month. That's a lot of search data to mine through and learn from. All this information really stresses the point that B2B marketers need to get in front of audiences at the early stage of research or they will become irrelevant. The other side to content marketing is that quality really does matter. In a competitive space, quality really is the only factor that helps you stand out to potential buyers and stand out to the search engines. And quality content actually has many benefits once it's published for your brand. In search, you need content to address your, what your consumer is looking for with relevant topics and keywords. Great content will also get you links from other sites with authority, which will help your own site's search ranking. And all of this will help with the search rankings for your site. But ultimately, people choose to engage with and share great content, which leads to positive brand affiliate and conversions for your brand. So really simply, content really is the fuel that powers all of the most important channels in marketing. And continuing to create a lot of great content actually requires what we consider at Skyward a newsroom mentality. What does this really mean? In order to publish like a newsroom, you first need to define the categories that matter to your organization. After that, you want to create a process that makes you nimble and agile enough to create content that addresses all of the conversations that are happening right now in those categories, casting a wide net, as Scott mentioned before. And B2B marketers really want to participate in those conversions from what we're seeing. 64% of them today want to produce more content, if they could. So becoming a newsroom is actually a little bit difficult. Um, two of the biggest pain points in doing so are being able to quickly respond to all of the ongoing conversations that you're trying to capture, and then optimizing your content for audience and search. So recognizing that content marketing can be a big challenge, we'll continue to address those points during this webinar. So how do you do these two things in a consistent manner? At Skyward, we believe there really are four pillars for creating successful quality content. You need technology that makes the process efficient. You need a content strategy that aligns with your brand and organization. You need expert content creators 
news writers who are trained to identify topics that align with your content strategy. And finally, you need an editorial process in place to check for accuracy and editorial alignment, which is particularly important in news writing. I've been using the words quality content quite a bit right now, um, but here's why it really matters. In the last year, Skyward Content drove more than 134 million unique visits from search and social to client sites. So capturing those conversations that are going on that align with your brand's categories is really important. And as you can see, quality content opens a lot of doors for your brand. One of those is being respected and trusted enough to become a news source for your audience and by Google News. I've helped many brands get accepted into Google News, which ultimately is a stamp of approval for your brand that shows great quality and domain authority and brings many searches to your site. The associated jump in traffic is well deserved for the brands that accomplish this because getting into Google News and staying there is no joke. Let's go through some of the main components of creating a program that is worthy of Google News. So as I mentioned, being in Google News really sets you up as an authority. So because you will be considered an authority, we need to be uh, tight with what we consider um, relevant content. What a lot of people don't know is that news content actually can't include advice or tips. Uh, it needs to stay factual to the news story at hand that you're discussing, and it needs to be in the third person. You'll also need, need news writers, journalistic writers, who know how to find their own topics, source their content correctly, and write quickly to respond to the ongoing conversation. You'll also want to maintain your editorial voice, but balance that with beco without becoming too opinionated. As I mentioned, again, we need to stay factual and stay on topic with the entire program so that you're con con considered a news source from Google. You'll also want to maintain a content calendar to ensure that you're creating enough content to be considered a true news source for Google. Um, there needs to be enough of it so that they have the ability to review it at any given time and make sure that you're still giving them quality, newsworthy content. And tied to that is actually publishing frequently enough in each of your major categories to make sure that each of them carry their own weight in terms of having newsworthy content. And finally, and this is actually a really big part, as if those weren't already, you'll want to make sure you have a separate section of your site for news-only content and a specific sitemap for Google News that only includes this content and is submitted to Google News every time a new article is published on your site. This is a really important step and one that I've helped many brands accomplish. Uh, once you do have all that in place, you can submit your application to Google News to be considered as one of their many news sources and cross your fingers. And so very quickly, here's a look at our visual uh, editorial calendar. I said earlier that this is a crucial tool for keeping track of individual assignments, and I wanted to just show you what that can actually look with and how it can help. And finally, even the most experienced journalistic news writers can get some for ideas to write about. So we provide them with possible news topics with our trending topics module on Skyward. They can see the available topics for technology news in this case. And as a writer, you'd be able to click one of them and get started. So that's how it's done. And Great. now I'll hand it back to Kevin. Great. Thanks, Christine. So you know, just to kind of recap, we're taking a look at two very different approaches on how you can tackle what Christine mentioned seems to be a major challenge uh, for B2B marketers. You know, 64% are challenged with producing enough content. Uh, but certainly when you look at all of the resources that are available to you, there has to be a better way and an opportunity to fill that gap to support your brand goals and objectives. So whether that's using syndicated content, news writers, or influencers externally who are subject matter experts and just have that natural trust that our customers are so desperately looking for, or whether you choose to rely on your internal employees to help supplement that content, it's, just, it's shocking to me that there are still so many uh, B2B marketers who are struggling in this space when there are so many tools that are available to you. Now, the challenge here is even if you were utilizing all these tools in a vacuum and separately, you're still going to run into a quality control issue. So how do you make sure that everyone that's participating or everyone that is feeding your content marketing approach is actually going to deliver your business goals. So Scott showed you a little bit about the content funnel. How do we lead people from news-based information down to 
information specifically about your product? And how do you make sure that you connect the dots all the way down that funnel so that by the time I reach your employee who's talking about your specific product and the value that you can bring or the way that you can solve their specific issue, how do we make sure that that journey is just absolutely in perfect harmony and that our users are getting value out of each piece of content that they touch along the way and that when they get, that when they get to the end, they're invited and inspired to go ahead and make the transition to, uh, to actually convert into a customer. So with that, I think we've got a great example here. Uh, and I do want to turn it over to, uh, to our remaining participant, but remind you before we keep going forward that the hashtag to the webinar is hashtag B2B content. Again, that's B2B content. Uh, and if you have any questions for any of the participants, certainly feel free to tweet them and we will address them at the end. Uh, but I'd like to turn it over to Leslie Reeser from IBM and she can tell you a little bit about how all of these content sources come together to create an extremely powerful program uh, it's something that you should consider uh, as a, a vision or something to replicate for your own organization. Leslie? Thanks so much, Kevin. And this has been um, a great experience participating in the program with such um, able partners. And um, I do really thank everybody for the opportunity for allowing me to share some of the insights from our program. But before we dive into the specific IBM-specific uh, content marketing program, I, I just want to give the folks on the line a, a sense of the marketplace dynamics that have really been the impetus for the formulation of this particular strategy and all the program deliverables that go along with it. So as Kevin mentioned on the outset of the call, my focus is on the SMB, the small and medium business marketplace, P primarily mid-sized businesses, and we define uh, mid-sized businesses as companies that have employee sizes of between 100 and 1,000 employees. And, and this market segment has really been experiencing a lot of transformation over the last couple of years, and we are predicting it is continue, you know, will continue to, to really just have um, rapid and, and expansive growth. Um, more than half of these companies are expected to increase their information technology investment you know, within the coming year and, of course, over the next couple of years, which is great news to IBM and, and other information technology providers like us, uh, partners as well. Um, but the, the interesting thing, and, and this is the, the point I really want to make, um, what I think differentiates this market segment and the opportunity that goes along with it is that they really have very um, small IT staff. You know, you typically will find staff with no more than five to fifteen um, people, and so it's um, you know kind of a um, an interesting you know dynamic that that's going on. Um, instead of relying on their staff, they rely heavily on local business partners, who are often their trusted advisors as well as influential industry experts, and you'll begin to see the, the dots connect here. These influential experts are the very individuals that really help these uh, customers evaluate and recommend and ultimately deploy their IT solutions. And that's why this strategy has been so important. Um, and just for the, OK, there we go. All right. The slides were not advancing, but now they are. So why don't we take a look at where customers have typically gotten their information in the past. And I'm assuming that many of you are, uh, whether you're a big brand, uh, a partner, supplier, uh, you're experiencing the same type of phenomenon. And, and this is, if you just take a look at the chart uh, right now, you can see that this is kind of the state, you know, before the advent of the social age. So if I could point your attention to the right side of this chart. I think this is particularly interesting. There are two data points that should really jump out at you. First is the average age of a newspaper reader, which is 57. Yet the average age of an IT decision maker or influencer that we deal with today is, is typically late 20s or 30s and up to around 40. The days of the printed word are really dwindling. Um, I don't know how, how many of you on the phone have children, but how many of them read newspapers daily? Uh, I don't think my kids have ever picked up a newspaper. 
And um, one of the interesting um, news uh, phenomenons that occurred a couple of weeks ago, you probably read about, has been the recent sale of the company that owns the uh, Chicago Tribune, the LA Times, and some other major uh, daily newspapers. They actually sold a suite of newspapers for a record low amount, and I'm saying record low by comparison, um, of $650 million. And again, compare that to the IPO for Facebook, which was about $104 billion. And what does that tell you? Our customers, like yours, are seeking credible information, and they're seeking it at a fast and very furious pace. And really, the evidence is clear if you just take a look at this chart. With 18 billion searches occurring each month via Google, as well as other popular search engines, Yahoo, Bing, whatever. And even more significantly, the information is being redistributed and shared 36 billion times per month. And these are actually 2012 statistics. So I would venture to say that the numbers are even remarkably higher. So if the information is being shared and distributed, you have to develop content that is easy to share and distribute and lends itself to this particular channel. And this is really where you know, our programs begin to come in. So if you take a look at you know, kind of all the marketplace dynamics, clearly the sales paradigm has changed. And it's not even a shift. It's completely transformed itself. Um, most of you are on the phone or probably if your marketers are, are familiar with the traditional funnel, I would submit it no longer applies. Um, you know, it used to be you'd cast a, a vast net and you'd pull in unqualified um, seekers, lookers, onlookers. But instead, what we're seeing is that the new model is, is really become an interconnected continuum where social selling is now about promoting your brand's message, offering very specific type of engaging content, but equally as important, distributing that content where your prospects, where your existing clients are already going for their information. It also requires listening, listening to the very unique and specific challenges that are faced by the companies that you target in your industry. And then finally, and here's that dot being connected again, relying on trusted and credible sources to engage and persuade your clients. And um, I mean, if you just think about this in your personal life, how many of you rely on a trusted source for restaurant recommendations or hotels or vacations, and you begin to see the impact that an influential advisor can have on purchase consideration. But it all starts with listening. And during the q and I hope to get a sense of who's on the phone and how many of you actually uh, deploy listening. But um, this is something we instituted about, I don't know, 18 months ago. And we recognize, it, re recognize that this was really a necessary step uh, in understanding the, the marketplace. And again, if your company doesn't already have a formal listening program, I really would challenge you to make that priority number one. Um, there are many ways to drive that type of discipline you know, in your program. There are paid tools like Sysimos, um, Radiant 6, actually, I, I think we, we use that. There are also many free tools available on the web. Um, you can you can actually do it through kind of a self mining exercise by searching uh, on specific hashtags um, that are specific to your industry and our industry. You know things like cloud computing or SaaS or RFP, and you would find the terminology aligned to to your industry. Uh, you want to look for common themes. You want to I begin to identify who are the subject matter experts that are commenting that are that are doing the talking. Um, you can you can set up RSS dashboards. Um, so basically, you know the whole concept is you want something that becomes your digital, customized um, online source or newspaper, if you will. Pardon the uh, the term. So what should you look for in effective? influencer. And, and Christine talked about the writers, and uh, Scott talked about some of the uh, bloggers in our program. And what we set out to do was to seek out individuals 
who have a very established area of expertise, again, in the information technology space, but who also had independent and robust followings. You know, in, in the social milieu, it's not so much about even who you know, but it's who knows you and who knows those people that are following you. It's sometimes those secondary and tertiary connections, which can be the most impactful and influential. You want to be mindful of who also they follow. Uh, ensure that these individuals have sound social graphs and, uh, and, and um, an established digital presence. Um, and can they provide commentary that's that would be perceived by your audience, by your target, as, as credible, as valuable. Um, so in short, you're looking for individuals who you know, are in the right places, interact and engage with the right people, have extraordinary experiences to share. Uh, and some, sometimes it can, it can go beyond the, you know, the specific, specific industry focus area, and they can actually expose some of their personality. And most importantly, what do they have to say? Is it interesting? And will it be engaging to your audience? At the end of the day, folks, it's still about content and the quality of the content. As we move to the next chart, I wanted to just give you a sense of a couple of the examples where we um, are using bloggers and writers and um, where they've been effective in extending the IBM brand message. And, and more specifically, the IBM mid-market brand uh, message to a broad audience. And again, they've been doing that through engaging articles, which we refer to as long-form articles. Um, and I'll, I'll discuss with you in a second where we publish those articles. And content that's very consumable, very shareable. Um, and that's, again, and optimized for search. Very, very important that you think about how you're developing content along with the quality of the content. And in this case, um, I, I point to Rick Robinson, uh, his article on cloud security, and Ken Hess's uh, podcast through in a very qualified audience for us. And a lot of that had to do with, again, the way it was developed and the, the quality of the content. Now, we do something um, a little bit unique. Whoop. Sorry about that. We do something a little bit unique in how we engage our influences. So the first step, of course, is you know identifying the appropriate influencers based on the criteria we just spoke about. And the key is to keep them engaged and to regularly encourage, entice uh, them to produce quality and relevant content you know, on your brand's behalf. So our approach to this, again, has been a little bit unique. We actually compensate our contributors through a pay-for-performance model. And it's based on how well their articles perform, uh, which we measure in terms of engagement and click-throughs and views, and how well they rank with popular search engines, as well as how well or if they were picked up by Google News. And the, uh, the Skyward platform actually uh, helps us monitor a lot of the um, the quality and the criteria that's very important to us. We are extremely vigil vigilant as well about providing ongoing education about our strategy, our offering portfolio, and we will also very often include these influencers in early announcement notifications and give them access to key subject matter experts in our company. We also expose them to um, the broader marketplace through exclusive participation in events, such as it could be live blogging, uh, tweet chats, webinars. And um, we invite them from time to time to participate live at uh, different industry events that we may have, whether it's to conduct interviews or to do live blogging on site. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, we think one of the differentiators that we can provide is the association with one of the most recognized and valuable brands in the world, um, which helps build the influencers' online eminence as well. And just to give you a sense of where the writers and bloggers um, fit in, if you will, you want to be mindful on how to most effectively use the various contributors that you may pull together in your content ecosystem. So we found that the industry writers and the bloggers are most helpful within the awareness, relevancy, and advocacy stages of the sales cycle. 
And then we tend to use the IBM skilled sellers, IBM business partners in the latter stages when you're really driving towards preference and conversion. So you want to, of course, you know, leverage these very valuable contributors where it makes sense um, to, your, um, to your brand and to your industry. And as we talked about earlier, our program relies on regular, ongoing listening. Uh, we get reports weekly, and they are fed into a weekly editorial calendar, which is all brought together through a weekly management system across agency, across constituency management system. And we tend to think of our of our um, the way we develop content and the type of content and the appropriateness of that content by channel. Um, you know, through this editorial process, which really has a lot of rigor in it, and we, we tend to go out about eight weeks, eight days, um, eight minutes, um, and uh, so that we always have content at the ready, depending upon what may be occurring in the industry, um, what trends we may see, both short and long term. We also encourage these contributors to publish in the channels that are suited to their content, like I mentioned, and to really be effective in how they use new media uh, and new media channels appropriately. And again, just to reiterate, um, the social web is all about access and sharing. You know, it's, it's kind of a give to get. The more you give, the more you get back. And then finally, we had to tackle where to publish all this great content. And again, these are very unique point of views and commentaries from the influencers. Um, and we developed uh, Midsize Insider, again, about a year and a half or so ago. And essentially, it's a publishing platform that serves as a news source for industry articles. It has an established editorial board. It highlights featured contributors trending articles, it integrates blogger articles through RSS feeds, and as I mentioned, writers are supplied with a weekly conversation calendar and then are encouraged to creatively look for appropriate industry tie-ins to a variety of topics that may be trending in the marketplace. In our case, again, that could be cloud computing, big data, data analytics, security. Um, you know, to name a few, and again, they would be very specific to your industry. And um, uh, we also have some planned enhancements that are, uh, I'll give you a kind of a sneak, um, not really virtual, but oral preview on. We have some enhancements that will be um, occurring, such as uh, the ability to auto-post content to other IBM environments, uh, expanded video and infographics capability, and the ability to pull in and publish externally written articles. We get a, um, just a ton of requests to, to leverage this platform. And you can find Midsize Insider just by going to the URL on this page. And then I'm sure you're all sitting here with anticipation as to how do we measure. Um, so on this chart, I provided a sample of some of the metrics that we capture across our broad program. And, and one thing to keep in mind is that the influencer and content marketing program that we're talking about today is really only one component of a, of a much more comprehensive and integrated, and the operative word here is integrated, program. Uh, it's, it's important that you develop your own success metrics and ensure that you can actually track and report those metrics, um, whether it's through KPIs or, tr or through other types of tradigital type of um, uh, measurements and and align them to your specific program goals. What may be important and in your industry could be vastly different from what's important in mine. And you're probably wondering how we did. Um, and here's kind of a snapshot of how we are performing since the program inception, which is uh, again about a year and a half or so ago. We've generated uh, 3.9 billion impressions, and actually, I think that that number is 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 even understated. Uh, we've published uh, 3,400 articles, long form articles, uh, typically three and four paragraphs in length, and we've driven an engagement rate of 10.4 percent, which is about triple the industry average. And I'm also very proud to announce that with my esteemed partners on the phone, we have recently won a very uh, prestigious industry award for best content marketing program uh, that was presented to us by Digiday Publishing. 
And uh, we also are, have been nominated for a couple more industry publications. So um, we are very pleased about that. And again, you know, just some final takeaways uh, before I turn this back to Kevin and we go through the Q&A. You know, it's, it's about the content. It's about the content quality. And it's about where you are engaging and um, leveraging the appropriate people to become advocates, ambassadors for your brand. So Kevin, I'll turn this over to you now. Great. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, you know, really great point there. And, and Leslie talked a little bit about you know, how do you get influencers to get involved. And certainly when you're a brand like IBM, uh, there's a lot of interest and awareness around uh, the IBM brand. But regardless of that, wherever you are, whatever the size of your brand, uh, you know, what, what the IBM team does and what this program does very well is really integrating the influencers and the news writers into the process. Leslie mentioned bringing people into the strategic conversations. So whether you're a large organization like IBM or a, a small business who's just looking to develop a relationship with influencers to help you create some powerful content, you know, it really comes down to the way you manage it. And I think the feedback we've seen from our influencers and our news writers uh, is just a, a pure excitement over working with a company like IBM, but feeling like they're getting that personal engagement and that personal touch, uh, which makes them go above and beyond what you would expect uh, from a normal, uh, a normal type relationship. So with that, I'd like to open up the Q&A process. Uh, we have a couple of questions already. I will reiterate again, the hashtag is B2B content. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, my first question is for uh, Scott Ludwig. So Leslie mentioned listening is a critical component of the program. Uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the tools that marketers can use to determine what conversations or topics would be best for brands to tap into to engage their target audiences? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, Sysmos and I think Rating 6 are, are great examples of, of tools that you can use to listen to conversations, identify the, the hot points, what is your target audience saying. Um, other tools like that um, include visible technologies, meltwater buzz, um, things that you can use to essentially set up queries for your, for your search, um, whether it be product specific or even just overall brand specific um, or campaign specific. Um, so those are great opportunities. There's also tools out there beyond just the social listening tools that are more focused on, on engagement. Um, so think, uh, tools like Engage Sciences or AppPinions, um, GraphEdge, Insights Express, um, eCairn is another one. Um, so using tools like that to identify where there's opportunities, um, whether it be an influencer opportunity or just a way that your audience can interact with you um, and engage with you in, in the social space. And then there's some tools that are more focused on the social management that give you that level of insight that can really enable you to bring experiences and content to your social channel. So Hootsuite, Buddy Media, Vitru, all great examples of, of tools that are out there that can really provide you with valuable data to create um, great programs for your audience. Great. Uh, Christine, so no matter how large your B2B organization is, search has the power to level the playing field among a competitive set. Can you provide a few tips for B2B marketers looking to start integrating search into their content marketing strategy? Sure. Thanks, Kevin. So I would suggest for uh, B2B marketers to start by really looking at themes that align with your brand. Um, what interests your target audience? Um, what conversations are they having out there? What stories are they talking about in the news um, every single day? And I really want to encourage folks in the call to you know, kind of push the envelope in that area and try to think, as, as Scott mentioned, cast a wide net and try to think about things maybe outside the box that you know, maybe don't specifically align perfectly with your brand, but they are things that your target audience is really reading about and interested in. So that when you capture them after they're looking for those news stories, you'll get them onto your site and make a connection with them. Um, that's the first tip. Then it just kind of comes down to finding the journalists to write those stories, the ones that have the knowledge in that area getting them assigned with content, um, and then taking the steps I mentioned before for submitting to Google News. Great. Leslie, so at the beginning of the call, I had mentioned a statistic, and I, and I think it really is relevant for, for you uh, and some of the things that you talked about. So I said 25% of B2B marketers experience a lack of integration across marketing, and that's from a marketing prof survey that was done a couple months ago. And while you were talking, you talked about 
uh, how important integration and collaboration is not only across uh, all of marketing but agency partners, uh, content publishing platforms. So what are some of the different things in, in you know, why do content center partnerships like these have the potential to be so impactful? I think it's a great question. And um, people, you know, as I mentioned kind of at the beginning, people are seeking information in, in very new and different ways. They're, you know, again, relying, whether it's on um, trusted advisors, industry sources, and whatnot, um, you know, for as they, as they go on this quest for knowledge and for answers to solve the particular business challenges. Um, the agency model, this, this kind of cross-agency model that we've pulled together uh, in the last couple of years has really enabled us to just expand our, our total reach. Um, it's the best confluence of, of partners that are all coming together. And as you know, Kevin, we, um, we also work with, very closely with marketing communications, with the press people, and with our IT analysts. So it's everybody kind of working in harmony off of the same hymn book, singing in the same key, is, is I think really the secret sauce to this program. You get a lot more air cover you know, when you've got great minds you know, thinking alike. Um, we work off the same editorial calendar. The bloggers, the writers, press, analysts are all provided with the same directional um, objective for the next you know, coming weeks. And it's really the, um, again, I, not to overuse the word, but integrate, the integration of, of all these constituencies coming together that have made the, the difference in our program. Great. Uh, so one last question just in terms of timing. Um, so this is kind of to Scott and Leslie. Uh, while it's important to generate buzz and awareness, and certainly everybody is measuring the buzz metrics out there, the likes and the shares, uh, a lot of digital programs are still relying on metrics like social media followers and website visits to measure program success. Why do marketers need to start thinking differently about success metrics and a program's impact on business and brand in addition to buzz? And, and Scott, why don't, you, why don't you start? Okay. Um, well, that's a great question. Um, and personally, the way, the way I look at it, I, I think about it is if, if I had a KPI and it was, you know, what's the number of followers or the number of fans. If that's my KPI, I'm most likely not going to wow the people I have to ladder up to. Um, they're going to ask, well, what's that mean? And that, that's the question we usually hear. Um, so you need to really make sure that you have measurement capabilities in place that track each effort individually. You can use things like Bitly or Google Analytics events. Um, but you're able to track those, those, your, your activities towards progress that for, for business, um, you'll understand you know, what you're, what you're, where the impact is being seen. Um, and this will give you a case to, to go back to your leader and get, you know, uh, get some more budget for next year's activities. Um, you'll also be able to see um, some insights into what's working, what's not. And from a brand perspective, you know, what you're looking at is share of voice now. You know, uh, beyond just the awareness, the impressions, you're looking at how you're being compared to your competitors in conversations. Uh, both at a brand level as well as an individual product and service offering. So I think those those are some key key things you got to look for um, in in measurement in in social media. Now, so what would you add to that? You know, I think everything that I would agree with everything that Scott said. I would probably just add that you know the whole vastness of the social web and and the ubiquity of it has really changed the whole nature of of you know how people find opportunities and, and how effective you can be in, in influencing for, you know, uh, purchase consideration and ultimately, you know, leading to a sale. Um, you know, people are relying on these new sources of information to make their decisions. And if, you, if you're only measuring traditional, you know, views and traffic, you're, you're missing, you know, 90% of the dimension. Who's to say that it was not that, you know, engaging discussion that somebody um, had with your brand through LinkedIn or through your Facebook page or through some um, blog post that they read that ultimately triggered the thought to call your company to engage with your, your sales force that ultimately contributed to the sale. You know, gone are there days that you're just going to send out, you know, some email or print tactic and 
get a response and you can correlate you know those responses to a particular opportunity that got generated there could be you know a myriad of different influences on that ultimate sale so you're just again not thinking about the entire um, sales evaluation or sales cycle in, in new and different ways and not ref and you're under reflecting that if you're not thinking about share of voice or word of mouth or buzz or the you know who's talking about your brand and what's the business impact of all those conversations. Great. Well I'd like to take this time to thank our panelists Scott, Christine and Leslie for joining us today. Um, at the, uh, we'll be wrapping up the webinar here in a second, but before we do, I just want to let you know that the slides from the webinar and the recording will be available on the Skyward and Digital Influence Group website early next week. So if you want to share with colleagues or uh, share with peers, by all means, feel free and certainly check the websites. Uh, but watch the Twitter handles also because you'll see from these individuals when those materials are actually going to be available. If you have any questions after the fact, or certainly if you're listening to the recorded version of the webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to each one of our participants with any additional questions. Uh, they are always standing by on Twitter. Uh, but we appreciate the time. Uh, hopefully you found this uh, valuable and educational. Uh, and we look forward to seeing how you apply some of the things you learned today into your B2B marketing content needs.